Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. This is Vipratyush and today in this video, we are going to create a game just using a no-code game developing tool, which is known as GDevelop. This is a great game developing tool, which lets you create amazing game without writing a single line of code. So we are going to create a very basic platformer game in this first tutorial. So by the end of this tutorial, you will be able to create a platformer game just like this one. We can run the player using our keyboard input and this will be an endless runner game. So before diving into the game software, you need to download it. So what you have to do is simply download the game engine which is GDevelop from its website. So with that being said, let's start developing our own game. So here we are inside the app. Now first of all, we will be looking at the interface. So in this side of the interface, you will see all the things that you need to get started like the projects and templates and you can even though choose from different kind of assets from over here. So you can basically modify any of these, but we will be creating our own game from scratch. So we will be clicking over here on this create a project option. Now you can name it anything like endless runner. Or if you don't have any name, then you can click on this randomize option in order to randomize it. Now I'm going to be clicking on over here to desktop full HD mode and optimize it for the pixel art as we will be creating a pixel art game. Now click on this create project option. Now after here, you can see the interface. It is very simple and very easy to use. So I'm going to be sharing with you how can you create the game. So first of all, over here, you have the very simple objects option. You can add your object. The object includes various things like the sprites. Sprites are the characters which you have to add like the players and all. And there is also title sprite option which will help you in order to create your own ground and all. We have the panel sprite, 3D box and 3D model. So let's start with the sprite. So I'm going to be adding a sprite and let's name it like player. And let's start by importing the images. Let's add the image from the asset store. Now this is the image for our idle position. So you can rename it like renaming each of the animation would be really great for you in order to organize your animations. Now we will be adding another animation. Let's name it run and let's add another sprite. Now after adding it, let's add this to loop and then you can change the timing even though you can decrease it or increase it and then click on this preview option. But let me mention over here that you can edit the image using the Pascal, which is an inbuilt pixel editor. And let's see the preview. So as you can see, we have a character running on. All right, that's great. Let's decrease the time. So this looks perfect. Now it's okay. And now we need to add behaviors. Now behavior tab is very important for the player because it adds physics to your player. So I'm going to be adding a behavior. For example, this player is a platformer character and it should jump run on the platform. So we need to add this platform character. Now by default, it has certain settings. You can easily remove the settings. For example, if you want to change this jump speed or gravity, then you can change it over here and you can change the name or object even though. All right. Now this will add certain behaviors to our very basic uh, sprite, which is adding forward movement, backward movement and jumping motion. So I'm going to be hitting the apply again and let's drag our player into the canvas and now increase the size a bit. All right, looks great. Now you can also toggle on the grid option. So you can click on this show grid. Now this will basically show the grid. Now you can set up the grid according to your need, according to your pixels. Now I'm going to be adding another ground over here. Now we need a ground so that our player can run over it. So in this time, we will be adding an object of tiled sprite. And as you can see, we have added a ground over here. Let's drag it in. And let me show you the difference between the normal sprite and the tiled sprite. So this normal sprite can be zoomed in and zoomed out like this. If this is rescaled, then it will multiply like this. So this is a very basic feature and the feature which we need to create a ground. So let's kind of make it a bit long. All right, that's great. So basically in order to get the preview, you can click over here in this section to add a preview. And as you can see, our player is not getting into the ground. Basically it is falling in because we have not set the ground behavior. So this is how it is important. This time we will be adding it to platform so that the player can run on it and it apply. 
now let's preview the main game and as you can see now i can move my player and even though jump over here all right looks great now let's add certain event to the game like in the beginning it will zoom into the character so we can do it by this event tab so you can zoom in and zoom out now over here i'm going to be deleting this one and let's add an action so at the beginning of the scene you can add an action and you can choose objects which are player and the ground and even though you can choose another options for example over here you can go for camera So now we will be select this center the camera on the object and let's choose the player and let's change it to 2 you can similarly change it to 2 or maybe 3 this works really best so hit ok now let's have a look at the preview and as you can see now it is zoomed in to our player all right let's add certain animation so that if the player will move then the camera will follow it so in order to do so, we will be adding another moment which is change the camera X position. So this can be done in the same behavior. So let me close it and add another event. This should be an empty event and let's add a condition. So for example, let's change the X axis of the camera. And you can set it to player. And then you can type in center and then you can pass in a value. But for now, we are not going to pass any value. Now let's hit OK and you are done. Now let's change the camera zoom angle. So we need to add a camera again and add this camera zoom. Now we will be adding a 3 to this option and we will be zooming it to the base layer and hit OK. Now let's preview our game. So as you can see, now we have a game where I can move my player and we can even though jump our player. That's great. Now let's add certain other animations. So let's add an event that if we press the right key, then our player should move towards the right and also it will play the animation run. You can click on this player and go with control pressed or simulated. Now let's choose right and hit okay. Now we will be adding animation to the player and let's set the animation by name and we will be setting the animation to run hit ok and let's have a look at the preview so basically as you can see when we are pressing the right key it is moving right and you can see we are pressing left then nothing is happening and also when we stop pressing then also it is running let's fix it let's add an event you can simply duplicate it so just click on copy and then simply add paste. Now this will add another similar one. So we need to change the key to left and hit OK. Now we are also going to flip the animation or object. So I'm going to be add another action to the player and let's flip it. So we will be flipping the object horizontally over here and let's activate the flipping hit OK. So all right now it works. Let's see. All right, you can see we, when we move it to the left, it is moving to a left. When we are moving it towards right, it is not flipping again. So we can fix it by copying this statement again into over here. Now let's change it to no. Now let's click on preview and we have the game character running. Finally, and we can even though jump it. Now, as you can see, the jump strength is a bit higher. So we are going to fix it. So I'm going to be changing the player over here and go to behavior tab as I have told you you can set the gravity and jump speed and let's change the falling speed a bit and sustain time to 0.1 hit apply and let's see the preview we can fix it a bit more Okay, now you can see our player is jumping to a little height, which is great and even though it is running. And as you can see, when we stop running, it is also now also playing the animation. So let's fix it by going over to events again. And let's add a condition over here to the player. 
So let's change the player moving option. So click on this and in order to invert a condition, you can simply toggle this button over here and hit OK. Now this is the inverted condition, which means if the player is not moving, then we will be adding animation again to the player that it should stop the animation. So we will be changing the animation again and let's set it to idle, back to idle basically. Now let's look at the preview. So as you can see, when we stop playing the animation, it is basically getting back to the idle animation again. So as you can see, there is a problem over here that whenever we are running, it is basically moving towards the end with a height over here. We are basically having a levitating effect over here. So let's fix it. So what you can do over here, we can change the collision property of the object. In order to do so, you can double click on this object panel and click on this property and edit collision mask. Now we can basically change the collision property. So use a custom collision mask again here and you can change the collision property to like this one. All right, looks great. Now you can change the frame and over here. So I'm going to be just turning this both of these button off and let's go to animation one dot run and let's change this to up to here. So once you are done, hit close and apply and let's look at the preview over here and we can even though jump the player and we can run it basically. So let's add the background so that the game looks more good. So I I'm going to be adding a new object over here. Add a tile thread basically and let's search for a background. So I'm going to be changing the name to BG and choose a file from the asset store. And you have a lot of options over here which you can choose from. So let's select a simple one and hit apply. And let's add it over here to this position. And let's increase its size. All right, let's change the layer property. So I'm going to be adding it to the base layer again. And you can change the Z order to zero in order to move it to the back side. And when you are done, let's look at the preview. So finally, as you can see, we have created a game very easily. And this is how it looks. Now, as you can see over here, the ground is a bit empty. So let's add some rocks. So again, I will be adding a new sprite. Let's change this to soil. Add an image from the asset store again and let's select soil. Let's again resize that soil so that it could fit the entire window. As you can see, now we have a player which is running like this and this, and even though we can jump the player. And we are done with the first part of our tutorial. So this was it. This is how you can create your very own, very basic game just using GDevelop. Now we will be adding more levels to this game and adding some coin feature to this game in the future video. So comment me what you want in this game to be added. We will make sure to create a tutorial on that basis. So this was it. I hope this video was really helpful for you. And if it was, then consider subscribing. Hit that like button below. I will meet you in the video. Until then, keep creating. Goodbye.